Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy! Welcome back to more Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness! In the last episode, we took down Greville at Cinedark Isle, saving the Ore region and Arceus knows how many other places from his evil grasp. And... I feel like everything came full circle. Eldus and Greville redeemed themselves, and Ardos, well... I am so sad that they never ever revisited this plotline. Uh, don't remind me. Anyway, just like any other Pokemon adventure, we are back in our room at the end of our journey, and we get an email! Egan! Dear Michael, I have I have heard that you returned from Citadark Isle. Yeah, I kind of visited you last time I did that as well, because I kind of went back to nickname my Dodrio. I send this message as an invitation to the Ore Coliseum. I'll be arriving shortly to ask you in per- The email is cut off. No! I didn't know that the email cut off, even though it's like the fifth time he's done it. You didn't need to tell- You totally needed to tell me that. No, I thought he was going to ask me in purr, as in the person purr that we met over at ONBS. Yeah. Jovi, I never thought I'd be happy to see you. I guess you can say I'm really jovial to see you. <laughs> Big brother, there's an old man with a really long beard standing outside. When Jovi asked, he let Jovi touch the beard. When Jovi tugged it, he said it hurt. It must be real. <laughs> okay, that's legitimately kind of funny. I gotta say, I'm really glad that Jovi was just kind of confined to the beginning, though, because, you know, she's kind of fun to see every once in a while, though, but I thought she was just going to be annoying throughout the entire adventure. I'm really glad that she wasn't. What do you have to say? Ah, uh, Michael, welcome back. You're quite the hero. Everyone says so about you. Be sure to show your face to Lily every so often. Though she won't say it to you, she is a mother. <gasps> Even though she doesn't tell me she's my mom, she really is my mom? Of course she's worried about you. Okay, I'll stop making starky remarks. It really is nice to be back here at the Pokemon HQ lab. Now, let me see what the party's looking like. Everyone is level 50 or 51, just as they were last time. I think I'm going to switch Billy Bob to the front here. Uh, I do have to say, that final battle, Jinzo wrecked Greville. Like, man, he was useful. Um, Volterra was pretty good, uh, Mustache saw a little bit of use though, but I'm really sad that Billy Bob and especially Zangoose and, um, Dodrio saw, like, no use during the final. I didn't even get to send out Zangoose, Dodrio, or Aggron, I don't think, though, but, you know, ah, oh, well, it's kind of a shame that I didn't get to use them, though, but still, you know, aside from Dodrio, I think they all proved their use well. Hey, what's up? Michael, have you read that email I sent you? Uh, I kind of couldn't read it. Oh, well, now that's odd. Perhaps I made a mistake when I sent the email in a panic. Well, that's not important. I was inspired by your battle exploits, Michael, you see. It made me want to have a battle with you. That said, Michael, there are countless trainers that would be honored to battle with Cypher's nemesis. I therefore decided to take charge and organize a Coliseum event. Impressed? Before we talk, we must battle, you and I, on guard! Never heard on guard used for a Pokemon battle cry before. That is awesome, yes! We get to fight Egan. He had a level 13 Pikachu and battled them last time. Once again, this time, Pichu and Pichu! Really? You give me a trainer with seven Pokemon and four legendaries, and my next battle is against two Pichus. Well, either way, they are level 45, Electro-type, Static for the ability, and they both know Volt Tackle, Thunder, Rain Dance, and Thunderbolt. So they have the Rain Dance Thunder strategy in there, though, but you might have also noticed, of course, that they do have Volt Tackle. That is a move that you can only get by breeding Pikachu while it is holding the Light Ball. The Light Ball is normally an item that will raise Pikachu's special attack, making it higher than its evolved form Raichu's. So, you know, that's kind of interesting that they have that move, though, but really, they're just Pichus. They really shouldn't be that hard for you to take out. Now we're ramping things up. He's going to be sending out a Pikachu, level 50, electric type, static for its ability. No hold items, no light ball at all. Volt Tackle, Thunder, Rain Dance, and Thunderbolt. So exact same move set as those Pichus. Um, I got Billy Bob just kind of wrecking everything right now because he's got Earthquake on our side. So, you know, I can't think of any better setup for this battle. I got something with Levitate. I probably would have sent out Dodrio for this, though, but... Didn't want to be weak to those electric types, of course. All right, so what do you got next? Come on, stop getting experience. Give me this. Okay, sending out another Pikachu. It is exactly the same as the last one, so I don't feel it's necessary for me to go over it. But next up is Raichu. Level 55, electric type, static for its ability. Volt Tackle, Thunder, Rain Dance, and Brick Break. Kind of interesting, I suppose. It's not really the greatest thing in the world. Wow, it's actually faster. Holy crap. I mean, I know Raichu's... Why did you not attack Billy Bob? I know Billy Bob's got, like, stupid high defense, though, but it's still a quad weakness. Why would you attack Jinzo? I don't know. Either way, Jinzo should take out Pikachu in one shot. No problem at all. And now, what is his last Pokemon? Why, I think you're beginning to see the pattern here. His last Pokemon is a Raichu, identical to the other Raichu he sent out. Yeah, so much for being a once really great trainer. I mean, I thought that, you know, the point was to balance out your team so you didn't have common weaknesses, says the guy who has three of his Pokemon weak to fighting. But, you know, I think I justified that. But you know what I mean. Like, his whole team is pure electric type. And while electric is a great type, only weak to ground, it's just that, dude, having all these electric types in double battles is just... You were just asking for me to beat you in three turns, which is exactly what I did. All right, Egan, what have you to say for yourself? 
Oh, I knew it, but bravo! I repeat, bravo! You knew it was such a rich old man. 5,500 is not bad. It's no wonder Cypher has their eyes on you. I must say, I enjoyed myself tremendously. I'm sure that the trainers who have gathered at the Ore Coliseum will be delighted to face you. Please, we'd very much like you to come. Yep, we have a whole new area out in the middle of the desert. You thought we were done exploring the Aura region. Nope! The toughest trainers in the land have gathered with you as their as the with you as the goal, Michael. We're waiting for you at the Ore Coliseum. Okay, so the Ore Coliseum is something that many, many of you have been asking me if I'm going to cover. And my answer is yes, but not in full. Uh, for those of you that remember back in Coliseum, we got the Deep Coliseum uh, after we completed the main story there. The Ore Coliseum is kind of similar, but... Welcome back, my long-lost friend of the Coliseum map screen music. Oh, I love this song, and it just sounds even cooler here. And let me just say, I love the look of this era. Remember that Coliseum we were doing, that simulation battle back at the beginning of our adventure? This is where that is. Yeah, it's a real place. I kind of think that a pink computer out in the middle of nowhere kind of ruins the tone a little bit, though. But just ignore it. Just block it out of your mind. Pretend it's not even there and just look at all this architecture and just how cool it looks. What you got, Egan? Hello, Michael. Very good of you to come. If you plan to take the Ori Coliseum Challenge, go to the reception area there. Okay. Now, the Ori Coliseum is exceedingly tough. Um, for those of you who think the Battle Frontier is tough and all those other different things, this is quite possibly the toughest battle facility like that in any Pokemon game. Levels are fixed. Uh, Pokemon will be either level 60 or equal to whatever your strongest Pokemon is if you are stronger than that. Uh, in addition, there are ineligible Pokemon you cannot enter with Shadow Pokemon or with Mew, Lugia, Ho, Celebi, Kyogre, Gra Groudon, Rayquaza, Jirachi, and Deoxys. So all of those are unable to enter. In addition to that, you cannot have duplicate hold items and you cannot use the Soul Dew item. So what I want to do is I'm going to make a challenge. And I am drastically underleveled for this, let me say. These Pokemon are going to be like level 60, I'm like level 50. So once we go in... We will see that we have teams of six Pokemon, and we are allowed to choose four Pokemon for this. It's going to be double battles, though, so it's kind of like the stadium games, if you remember those. Uh, how do I want to go about this? I don't have a fire type, though, but... Gotta have Voltaire, and I'll go with you. Okay. I think that's pretty good. Kind of a shame that Jinzo and Billy Bob aren't getting to fight here. Okay, so... I am not going to make any promises at all that I can do this, but... You do need to beat at least one four-battle challenge in Ore Coliseum to further what goes on in the after game. So, oh, he's folding his arms at us. Don't put me to sleep with a boring battle. Okay, this guy, Greel, is he like an awkward cousin of Greevil? <laughs> anyway, Greel here, I, I can't lose to him though because you know when he beats you, he's gonna be one of those trainers that has like an absolutely rude thing to say to you when you lose. Uh, anyway, unfortunately they do not have any of their grass types. I was hoping that he'd choose Parasect or Breloom so that I could take advantage of the quad wing as a trifecta there, but of course not. Uh, I need to get rid of that Gardevoir as soon as possible, and... Yeah, I'll target Gardevoir, and... Oh, come on! Oh, it didn't attack Drek, but... I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I am cutting ahead here because I beat one Pokemon in the first round before losing the first battle. Yeah, um... So I'm gonna need to go train up for a little bit. Ugh, everyone's level 60 at long last. Uh, before I get into how long this took, man, I do have to say this. I know I didn't necessarily have to get up to level 60, but I wanted to get up to level 60 just so that I could have the best possible chance of winning these fights. The reason for that is, like I said, the opponent's team start at level 60, and then if you get stronger than 60, they will match the level of your strongest Pokemon. Um, thing is, much like the Battle Frontier, Ori Coliseum is designed for, you know, competitive teams. You know, teams that are geared for multiplayer, teams that have really, really diverse movesets. And while I do have good Pokemon on my team, my team is more built for snagging Shadow Pokemon. And as such, it doesn't make it the best performing team here in the Aura Coliseum. A lot of people import the Eevee Train Pokemon from Game Boy Advance games, though, but I kind of wanted the team of six that made the journey with us to, you know, fight here. That's just kind of how I felt about the whole thing. As for how long this took me, you might have noticed that I said that XD bonus videos would start like three days after uh, XD ended. Now we're like a week after XD ended. Yeah, that's because of Ori Coliseum and how long it took me to train up to level 60. Just saying though, one thing that bugs me is the fact that Eldest is like level 40, Grievel's like level 50, and then boom, this is level 60. It's like, 
I get jumping like 10 levels for the final boss, but it's like, this is the second consecutive time you have jumped the difficulty by 10 levels in the span of like two fights. Uh, it's, it's, I, it's irritating. But as for how long this took me, I'll, now it's not fair to say that uh, all this time was spent training because I was also purifying Shadow Pokemon, but in total, my playtime is eight hours and 15 minutes higher than when I first attempted this when I was like level 51. Yeah. So, whoever thought this was a good way to start the after game, I will never ever understand you. Just saying, because why would you make this the very first thing you have to do? The final match, and just who is the champion of this Coliseum that has put us through so much misery and grinding? Laverina! None other than the so oh so terrifying Terra herself, yes. What does she have to say? Well, what a coincidence. Imagine seeing you. This time I'm not losing though. She didn't say so once. I am so disappointed. Anyway, Laverina. As, of, as is all the other opponents that you'll face here, her team varies. It can be level 60 to 100. She can also start off with different Pokemon. In this case, she is starting off with Wobbuffet, Psychic type, Shadow Tag for its ability, Lumberry for a hold item. Charm, Counter, Encore, and Mirror Coat, as well as Miss Drevis. Of course, she fixed that with me. Ghost type, Levitate for its ability, Quick Claw for hold item, Torment, Attract, Confuse Ray, and Protect. These two Pokemon starting off, uh, Miss Drevis is kind of a staller, and Wobbuffet, well, everyone knows what Wobbuffet does. It can't attack you directly, but it counterattacks. It has a ton of HP. Um, I'm going to be opening with Light Screen here. Uh, the reason why I'm opening with uh, Jinzo and Billy Bob is the two of them complement one another very, very well. There's the fact that Jinzo can do uh, Explosion, and Billy Bob, even if he doesn't protect, will not take very much damage from it. The other thing is the fact that Billy Bob, of course, can use Earthquake and Jinzo Levitate, so they complement one each other very, very nicely. And I'm basically just going to be attempting to take out the Mysterious first and foremost. Of course, it uses Protect, so I shouldn't be all that surprised there. So I'm wasting both of my attacks this turn. I just... The thing is, is that, that because that Wobbuffet cannot harm me until I attack it first, I just kind of want to leave Wobbuffet there and just kind of only deal with one Pokemon at a time. The fact that I only have to worry about one Pokemon at once uh, makes it a lot nicer. Granted, I lose my ability to switch by keeping Wobbuffet on the field due to Shadow Tag, but I just kind of feel like it's a lot nicer to deal with one Pokemon that can do damage each turn, or in this case, also Confuse. So that's just kind of what I feel. Mistremus doesn't have any direct damaging moves. It's just kind of there as a staller, and Wobbuffet doesn't have any direct damaging moves. So pretty much, this is just a... Whenever I get in an attack, Mistremus will go down. Like right now. Oh, come on! Ah, uh, I was going to be so smug, and you ruin it! Ah... Uh. All right, well, needless to say, with a Staller on the field and a Pokemon like Wobbuffet on the field, this could take a while. So I'll see you guys in a little bit until I get a hit, because he's totally doing Protect the Surf. After Iron Tail missed about a dozen times, I end up beating Miss Drevis with Ancient Power. Yeah, really, really nice. Anyway, next Pokemon, Milo Tick. Water type, Marvel Scale for its ability, Lax Incense for hold item, Toxic Attract, Confuse Rate, and Wrap. Once again, not really a damaging Pokemon. Toxic is, of course, a fantastic move, and Attract, Confuse Rate is kind of an evil combo, especially with Wobbuffet on the field preventing from switching, but its only direct damaging move is Wrap, and that's not really good. I was kind of expecting this thing to at least have Hydro Pump or something like that, but Again, kind of a lame moveset. I mean, I guess Miss Drevis did its job well enough as a staller, but I don't know. I'm just going to use Explosion right here because, well, it's fun to go boom! Oh, crap. Um, I didn't think Wobbuffet was going to live. Uh, that's a problem. I should have had Billy Bob attack and not do Protect. Uh, Billy Bob would not have taken much damage from the Explosion because he quad resists and he has high defense, and uh, that's not good. Okay, well, there is a very, very real possibility that I could set up Mustache into this and Wobbuffet will counter the explosion, in which case I'm losing my Walrein. Alright, Confuse Ray, please attack Walrein, please. Please, Walrein. Walrein. Good, okay. So, let's see. I'm not too. Here it comes! Here it comes! Yep, yep, yep. Uh, uh, I really should have attacked Wobbuffet that turn. I don't know, I, I forget if Aggron is faster than Wobbuffet in this instance though, but uh, that that was bad. All right, so I'm down to my last two Pokemon. She has still got three of hers, that's bad. But, but, my last Pokemon is Voltaire and there is no way that Milotic is surviving. Not to mention, I'm pretty confident that uh, Iron Tail will do a lot of damage to whatever comes out next. All right, let's see. 
There we go. Milotic goes down. And what is your last Pokemon going to be, Lavrina? Give me one of three Pokemon we have yet to see. It is Shuckle. Bug Rock type. Sturdy for its ability. Chesto Berry for its hold item. Toxic Attract, Rest, and Wrap. Wrap is kind of a strange move. Personally, I would have gone for Protect or something like that, though. But this is an excellent Staller. Rest and Chesto Berry is excellent. Toxic is a fantastic move to have on Shuckle because it has... Uh, can outlast a lot of different things. Shuckle has the highest defense and special defense of any Pokemon in existence. So, yeah, she's got a Staller on the field once again that doesn't really directly do damage, and of course, Boba Fett, who can't directly damage anyway. So, I'd say I'm in a pretty good position. Her other two Pokemon that she did not use, she has Meganium, Grass type, Overgrowth for its ability, Bright Powder for Hold Item, with Leech Seed, Attract, Toxic, and Protect. This thing is kind of annoying, though, but not really all that bad. And then her other Pokemon, which I personally lost to this thing once. It is absolutely brutal. Blissey, normal type Serene Grace for its ability. Leftovers for its hold item. Counter, Attract, Sing, and Seismic Toss. Counter and Seismic Toss on a Blissey are just pure evil. If that Blissey survives a physical attack from you, you're going down because of how much HP that thing has. On top of that, Seismic Toss is fixed damage doing whatever your level is. So coming from a Blissey who doesn't have much attack, that's very, very unexpected damage. And there we go. I uh, took out Wobbuffet, didn't have much trouble at all, one with two Pokemon remaining, I'm pretty proud of that. There we go. I made a mistake by not having Billy Bob attack Wobbuffet, but still worked out okay for me. There you go, droop your hair on the floor, Lavrina. Drag it along the floor as you mope out of this arena. I want you to feel the misery that I felt training for eight hours. Uh. Alright, so we get Pokemon's at 500! I get more than that for Area 1 in the freaking Mount Battle! Cheapskate! Ah. Uh. I'm sorry, I don't mean to, like, lose it, though, but after how long that took, I get 500 Pokemon. Anyway, we got an email. Bella. Michael, hello. I'm sorry to be writing you at any notice in advance. I obtained your number from Egan. There is something odd happening in our village. If you could visit us when you... Thanks, I didn't know the message cut off once again. Yes, okay. I think I'm done being a negative Nancy, though. I think I'm going to save my data right here, and I think we're getting things off here. Next time on Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, I say we investigate what Bella was up to. It'll give us something to do besides Ori Coliseum. All right? See you guys then.